Yes. So we'll uh, continue with the uh, introduction, uh, Git intro. It's actually here, this one. Uh, we mostly won't have time to start a, a collaborative distributed version control, but we will prepare everything to be ready for tomorrow, and we have enough time. In so uh, open a terminal um, from yesterday, and uh, you should have your recipe repository. So I need to go actually in my uh, folder, which is a mega code refinery workshop. I do a PWD and you see all the comments uh, will be repeated at the top once they are executed. So not the current command, but the, all the history will be uh, here at the top of my screen. And this is separated with this line. So if, uh, if you are a bit behind, um, hopefully you can still see all the different comments I have done. But if you need help, please notify us. Um, and then I will go to my recipe with CD, change directory to the recipe folder. And then here, I would like you to make sure we are in a state where there is nothing to commit and uh, we have a clean folder, a clean repository. And if not, uh, you can uh, give you like a few minutes to make sure you have it clean. Once you have a clean repository, please uh, put a yes. Uh, and it means I can continue. Same time, I will open this. And we'll start with branching and merging. And if you have any problem, your repository, uh, you can't find it, or if there is anything wrong, um, Please notify with a no, and we can help you. Yes, yeah, so I see in the chat someone needs help. And in my repository, I have two files. I have ingredients and instructions. It doesn't really matter what it contains in the so far, I can show you what I have. I have some ingredients for the guacamole recipe and the same set of instruction. Uh, okay, we don't see it, so this is why I need to make it smaller and move. We still need to be okay. It's still. Not fully right. Yeah, I hope so. it's okay now. So then it's a bit smaller here. You only see the last one. Okay. So we have few people having trouble. Uh, hopefully it will be resolved soon. Um, So while maybe uh, we're solving the problem, I can start um, discussing the motivation for branches. I will show it here. I will come back to this picture yet, uh, just after. I will show the motivation for branches from this uh, picture. Um, so, so far we had one repository, which is a guacamole uh, repository, and we had only one branch, and we never even discuss about branches, but uh, by default, we have a master branch, which is this one, like this horizontal line. But now what we want to do is to be able to make a development of new feature and uh, to be able to work independently uh, from each other if we are collaborating. Uh, even if we are alone, I would like to be able to do a code uh, modular code development. So to be able to develop one feature and uh, in one branch and another feature in another branch. So in the, in the HackMD, we will point you uh, to the lesson, to the start of the lesson, uh, the training material. Um, so here, for instance, I would like to uh, develop one feature for the octopus, which is to wear glasses, uh, sunglasses or hard glasses. And uh, this feature, will be completely uh, 
independent from what is going on in the master branch for a while. And I have another branch, a cowboy hat branch, where I will make some other development. And then once my uh, glasses uh, branch is ready, I will merge it to the master branch. And the same for the cowboy hat. So here I can do really a modular code development and uh, I can isolate my development and my feature in different branches. And this is what we want to learn to do. So we will need to learn to create branches and to merge and uh, uh, also to navigate from one branch to another. And this is uh, uh, the purpose of this episode. Now, if we go back to what we have now, uh, this is, I will show you in, in my repository. So if I do again, git status, there is nothing to commit. I'm sorry, a bit. No, no, I need to move it slightly. Uh, yeah. And if I do a git log, minus minus one line, so this, you can type it along with me. I'm checking and you can check at the same time in your repository. I have three commits. You may have more commits, it's okay. According, uh, you have a, a repository which is clean, it is okay. Um, so here I have three, reposit uh, three commits with three different hatches. And this is what we have here on this picture. So one box is one commit, so I have like three. And then uh, this master here is a branch name, a default branch name, which is called master. And this is, uh, it points to the last commit, to this commit here, which I, I, I added on Joy the Guacamole. And the head, if you remember, we had a question yesterday uh, about the head. The head is a current position. So, so far we had only one branch. So uh, when we have one branch, the current position uh, is, uh, is important when we inspect past commits because we are moving like a cursor from uh, the current position. Uh, we move the current position to another uh, commit, uh, a bit like uh, when we had tape, we could go back. Uh, and uh, when we will have now branches, it will become even more important because we will navigate from one branch to another. So this is what we have here. Uh, now let's go. Um, so when we, uh, we do this uh, modular code development, we can have a bit more complex way to uh, organize the repository and the development than what we have in this. A figure here, which is doing independently two branches and then merging at the same time. We can do a bit more complex where we have uh, a, a development here for a feature B feature. It is merged later, and in between, we can develop another branch, like this green branch, where sometimes, from time to time, you can also merge and get contribution from here, like the master. And we would do this, for instance, if uh, we fix some bugs in the master branch uh, that can affect the development in your new branch, in this green branch. So this is when we would take uh, this uh, and merge. So we don't have to merge only at the end. We can merge from time to time if we need to get a different contribution uh, and it affects the development of, uh, of your branch. Um, so here I can, yes. One thing we, we discussed yesterday uh, in some of the exercises, we, uh, we use Git graph and uh, we realize that Git graph it doesn't exist by default. If you do Git graph, uh, it says it's not a Git command because indeed it's an alias and we forgot that we are using because we, we use it very often. We have it in our first configuration setup. Um, and uh, we forgot to give it to you yesterday. So in some of the exercises, we use a Git graph while it wasn't defined. So uh, Git, uh, like in, uh, in Bash, uh, Unix, you can have aliases, which are very convenient because it, uh, instead of having a very long command, 
uh, with many different options, we can uh, create an alias and a shortcut, uh, which is what we will do here. So when I do a git log, minus minus one line, and you can type along with me. So this is what I have. I have information about the different hashes and one line for each commit. I can add log minus minus one line, Oops, one line, minus minus, decorate. And I will have a bit more information. So here you see, for instance, I have the hash. I know where is the current cursor with a head. I know it is on, at this hash. And I know uh, the master is here. So I, I get some more information. And now what we would like to see is a tree structure when we create branches, to be able to identify all the different branches and uh, uh, have some kind of graph similar to what we have here. And for this, we will define this alias, which says we will add, so this is a log command, but we will add all these different uh, parameters. This is minus minus all, minus minus graph, this decorate and one line, which is interesting. So let's define this alias and you will have it uh, available. So we have this global, which is for all your repository. It will save in the git config, in the main git config. And I define an alias and my, uh, the name of my alias is graph. So this is why I can use later on git graph. And I use double quotes, so type along with me. Log minus minus all minus minus graph minus minus decorate and minus minus one line. So hopefully we have to type it only once. And I enter. And then I can see you don't really see the command up there. It's a bit not as expected, but um, and then if I use git graph, now it's very similar to this one line and uh, decorate because we don't have uh, uh, different branches. Um, I will clean, clear hole. Um, if if you manage to use git graph, put a yes. because we'll use it a lot today. Yeah, so it sounds good so far. So this is the alias we want to have. Yeah, and put no if you have any problem and ask for help if needed. And if I need to go slower or faster, you can also indicate in the, in the go slower and go faster button. Yeah. Yes, okay. So, uh, now I know where the head, I know the master branch is here. Now uh, what I want to know is on which branch I am currently uh, and I will need to learn to navigate, create new branches and go to this new branch. So I will first use git branch, which is a new command and it, it gives without any argument the branch, the current branch and you can see this is the current branch because you have a star and this is green for me. Then I'm in the current branch, which is a master branch. So this is this command, on which branch are we? And this is where the head branch to. So now we will create a new branch. So we will start to make the development. We will create two branches like in the octopus uh, uh, image, and then we will merge the two different branches. So let's create a branch and I call it experiment. So I will create a branch. So the way to create a branch is again to use git branch, but to give a name. So here I give git branch experiment. And you can type along with me, git branch experiment and enter. 
It doesn't return anything except a new branch. Yes. I should clear the yes after. So now I have a new branch. If I do a git branch, it points to the master branch, but I see I have created a new branch experiment. So now I want to switch. So the way to switch is to use git checkout, which is not an unknown command. But now we are using the name experiment to say we want to switch to the experiment branch. And a new version, it can we can use a switch command. Okay. We'll see it later. So now if I do a git branch. We are in the experiment branch. So now we should all be uh, in the experiment branch. If you are not in the experiment branch, notify with a no. And uh, if you are in the experiment branch, notify with a yes. Yeah, so we have. Know. So now I will create, uh, I will add some ingredients, a silent row, into my recipe. So I will edit with nano ingredients. And I will add, so don't bother if you don't have exactly the same list of ingredients. And I will add two, oops, two tablespoon of silent row. Then I save it, control X and yes, I use nano, but you can use any editor. Um, and then uh, as before, we use git add and git commit. So before we do a git add and git commit, we always check the branch, git branch. And always it's a, it's a good thing, uh, thing to do. You check the branch you are in to make sure what you will commit is in the right branch. So here I will git add, Um, ingredient. Uh, so what we did, we created a branch experiment. This is all here. I, I, now we have learned to use git branch to check the branch we are in. We create a branch with git branch experiment. We go into this branch with a git checkout experiment. So we switch to the branch and now we are editing a file, which is the ingredient where we are we have added silent row, which is here. So I added two tablespoons of silent row. And then I'm uh, now I'm adding and committing. So if I do a git status, which you can do, I have already added stage the ingredient and I will commit. I will add silent row to recipe. So if I do git status, have it, nothing to commit, but if I do a git graph, now I see the head is at the experiment branch and the master hasn't changed. So now I started to diverge and, uh, because I have created this new branch. Uh, now I can edit again this, uh, this file, so to add some more commits, ingredients. And instead of two, I will reduce two, for instance, to one. So this is mostly to have a bit more commits. And I will do the same, git add ingredients. So here I git commit minus M, reduce the amount of silent rule. And again, I do git graph. So I, I always type a few commands. I do a nano, I edit ingredients, and I add and uh, some silent row, and then I remove some. And uh, then I add commit in the experiment branch. And this is mostly to show you that the master doesn't move, and now I'm getting more uh, commits in the experiment. Uh, 
and this is so uh, make sure you can also follow along here and this is what we have now we switch this part with the checkout um, and we'll do the exercise together so now um, put a yes if you manage to have your experiment branch and put a no if you still have problem with your experiment branch Okay, sounds good. So now uh, I want to create another branch, which is a less salt branch, but I want to, uh, to uh, define it from the master, a bit like what uh, we had with the octopus. So uh, now I'm in uh, the head is in the experiment branch in this last commit, and I would like to go back here and create another branch. So uh, what I will do is first, I will check the branch. I'm in the experiment. I want to go back to the master. So to navigate from one branch to another, we use git checkout. And I put the name. I want to go back to master. Git checkout master. Git branch. I'm in the master. And git graph. The head has moved back to this commit. And we have this branch, which is now uh, completely diverging from, uh, from the master so far. So now we will create from the master branch a new branch called less salt. So I will create a branch, it branch less salt. So you do it with me. Uh, just to gain a code along session. So now I uh, created a branch, and again, if I do a git branch, I'm still in the master, so I need to get check out the less salt branch. And I can do a git graph, and I see the head is in this less salt, and it's at exactly at the same commit as uh, the master branch. So now we are ready to create, uh, to edit. The file to reduce the amount of salt. So this is what we have here, and this is what we have in this graph. Here. So what we have done, uh, we have done this experiment branch. Now we have moved the head back to here, and we haven't created this less salt yet. So we have created the branch, but it is we are still here. We will create a new commit in this in a, in this uh, in this less salt. So we edit nano ingredients and i will remove salt i will put one i control x and i say so i have only one tablespoon teaspoon maybe one i think it was teaspoon of salt i have one instead of two i can use git diff and it says uh, i have less salt in the kit in the less salt branch and i can git add ingredient git commit reduce the amount of salt nice great graph and i can see so here you see we start to uh, see the different branches the master is here, and I can see the experiment branches here. And now I have the head here with the less salt and the new commit. So we are exactly what we have on this graph, except the head is here. Now I will uh, go back to the master. So first, let's clean the yes and no. So if you manage to have your less salt branch and you have something similar to what I have on the show, showing on the screen, put a yes. If you need help, put a no. If uh, you need me, uh, me to go slower, uh, let me know. Or if this is the right pace or faster, you can notify me too. So now we have uh, um, 
these two branches, it's time to, uh, do, uh, to go back to the master branch. So I'm in the less salt branch. I will use a git checkout to navigate and go back to the master branch. So now I'm in the master, so I'm back here, the head is here. And uh, I will add a readme file. So I will uh, start to make changes in the master branch, uh, for instance, to add documentation. So I will nano readme.md, so the extension.md means markdown. So we'll see later on when we use uh, um, GitHub, it can be rendered automatically. And here I will give some information about this uh, repository. And this is good practice when you have a, a new repository to have a readme file. That's a minimum uh, for the documentation. You see later we can have more documentation. And this is a guacamole recipe and we use this repository for teaching it. Then I will control X to save. And I will add and commit. So I check. I'm in the master branch, so I want to commit the documentation in the master branch. So I will git add, read me, git commit, and add documentation to recipe. So now if I do a git graph, I can see the head is at the master. We have a new commit and we have the two branches, one branch for the experiment and one branch for the site. Like here, but the head is here and we have an additional commit. I don't know if we have, yeah, so we have it here actually. So we are here. So we have done, this was the initial three commit. We have done a new commit in the master and this is the head, the current position. We have the experiment and we have the less salt. So now it's time to merge uh, the contribution, which is what we will do here. Uh, if you have any questions so far, please add it in, uh, in the hack and be. So in terms of feedback so far, I have uh, the same amount of go slower and go faster. So I will, um, try more or less to, uh, to keep the same uh, pace. And if you need help, uh, please ask. Um, so uh, I will make a five minute break now. And especially if you get stuck and you didn't manage to get the repository, uh, we have here a recipe to get a rep Oops, which is here. All right. No, I go too fast. I lost it. Yeah, that one. Um, if you get stuck uh, with the above exercises, we have prepared a repository which you can clone. So if you execute, if you if it didn't work for you, uh, make sure you cd dot dot to go out of the recipe repository and you can clone uh, a, a repository where we have already prepared exactly what we have here in this repository. So I give you a bit of time. And if you have the right, repository notify us with a yes and we do a uh, maybe like a two or three minutes um, you can follow along in uh, in the uh, in the training material so now we will merge the two branches one after the other so we'll first merge the experiment branch so we'll merge the experiment branch with the master branch and we'll merge the less salt branch with the master so we'll do first we'll do this We'll create a, so every time we uh, merge, we will create new commits. So we'll create a new commit to merge uh, the experiment branch with a master. Uh, and here, this, this is what we will do. And then uh, later on with the less sort. So here I will git merge. So it's another command, it's a merge experiment. So make sure before, maybe, sorry, you check the branch you are in. So when you use this git merge command, you need to be located in the branch you want to merge to. So I want to merge experiment into master. So I'm 
going to the master branch. I am already in the master branch. And now I merge experiment. And uh, I will get this pop-up window. It can be different de uh, depending on how you have configured um, your Git. And here I have Nano, where it says the default message is, is merge branch experiment. So like a commit message, because we are adding a commit. And I control X to quit. So I have merge made by the recursive strategy, and we'll discuss strategy afterwards. And now I have a new commit. I do a git graph. I can see the experiment branch has been merged into the master branch. And the head is here at the last commit, which is a new commit with a merge, which is what we have here. Um, and I can use a git branch minus minus merge. So you can do it along with me too. And uh, we can see uh, from the branch master, the branch master uh, has been merged with the experiment branch. So uh, all the branches I merge will be listed here. Now it's time to uh, merge with the less salt branch. So I will bring this and I will do exactly the same as before, but this time with the less salt. Git merge less salt. So this is what we have here. So you make sure you're in the master branch and you merge with the less salt. And again, it creates a new commit here. I control X and uh, git graph to check. Now I also have merge a less salt branch. So I, I am mostly here. I made first commit where I merge with experiment and then I added a new commit because I merge with the less salt branch and I'm in the master branch and the head, the current position is at this commit, which is my commit here. So now if you have, yeah, I see we have some have problem. If you manage to merge both your experiments and less salt, put a yes. If you had uh, any problem and need help to know, and now we can look at, at what is in the ingredient file, which is uh, less salt and uh, uh, some silent way. One keyboard screen of silence. So we have uh, several issues here. It's uh, quite expected. And if you have question, put uh, your question in the hack MD. That's a preferred way to ask a question. If you have a merge conflict, uh, we'll, we'll handle conflict later. But if you have a, a conflict, uh, ask for help. Uh, you shouldn't have any conflict so far if uh, we, you have uh, followed the instruction, which was to create the two different branches from the merge, uh, from the master branch. But the, it, it can happen something something wrong happens, so please ask for help. Yeah, if the git graph is not uh, defined, this is at the top. It's an alias. Which is uh, defined at the top. So put yes once you are done with the exercise. It was really at the top, so useful alias. So if you search for useful alias, you will find it. 
and you can copy past this command here. Oh, um, can I lift one question from the hacker B to here to the main room? Of course, oh, yes. Because I think it's good for the understanding. So there was yeah. one question, please, before merging a lot, could we discuss what exactly happened with the files? So I think it's a good question so that we all understand what really happened there before we go. Uh, with the ingredient file, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I what mean... Happens, what happens to files when we, when we merge? So when we merge, the file is, uh, is merged uh, automatically by Git, uh, it's, it's taking, so here when we merge with the experiment, if you remember, in the experiment uh, branch, we, ha we had uh, um, less cilantro, so we have one teaspoon of cilantro. So when we merge, and I, yeah, I'm sorry, because I should have shown the ingredient uh, file after we merge with the experiment, and I forgot. So when you merge it here, instead of having two, we had uh, one for the silent tool. And uh, we reduce the amount of salt here, so we, we update this line in the ingredient. Uh, and? Yes? Uh, maybe you could show a git show of the commit just before the merge? Yeah, I've done already the merge. Uh, 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 git show of the commit uh, with the commit hash just before the merge, so it might. Yes, yeah, yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. that's a uh, that's a good. If we do it here, we can uh, skip it later on because the git show command is uh, we show it again in the, in the last. So if we go, for instance, so let's go go from the beginning. Which one do you want? This one. This is what we had initially. So in this one, I added on joy, and uh, the instruction uh, has been changed, but not uh, not uh, the ingredient. I could get show the ingredient. Oops. And then I need to do a git graph again because my. Uh, I would normally I would use git annotate here to use it. To, I don't know if, if it is worth showing it here. But, um, could Git show uh, is this one you want to see, uh, Sabri? Uh, yes, Anne. Because this is where uh, we had this experiment branch, where we reduce the amount of silent row from two to one. Now it's uh, so I had uh, uh, reduced the amount of silent row here, so the file ingredient had one instead of two. So in the master branch and in the less salt branch, we had two teaspoons of silent tool. Um, when I merged with the master, it will uh, take what I have in, uh, in the experiment branch and it will say this is what we want to have as a strategy. I take this one as the final answer for the amount of silent tool. Then when I merge with the less salt, the less salt, we, we only change, so if I did show this one, we, we, we reduce the amount of salt from uh, two to one, but there is nothing about silent rule. So when we merge this file with a, a master branch, even the experiment branch has been merged already, the um, amount of salt will be reduced from two to one. And uh, because the master branch has been merged already with the experiment branch where we added the silent row, uh, I will keep the silent row in the master branch because it has nothing to do with the salt and the, what we are doing in this less salt branch. And uh, the result will be less salt in the master branch plus silent row in the master branch when we merge the two branches which is exactly what we had at the very beginning with the octopus. So here, this is like the less salt and the uh, silent row branch. And when we merge, we really have in the ingredient both contribution from the less salt and the silent row. Um, does it answer to your question or to some of the questions in the HackMD? If anyone wants to add something, please. So, uh, we still have a few people stuck. Uh, if you have your merge 
please uh, add a yes. And uh, now you will uh, do more, some more exercises in the breakout room. So you will be able to discuss within your group about what we have done with new exercises. And, uh, and if, hopefully, uh, if you have more questions, add it in the hack and read. So here we have merged. And the last thing I want to discuss before we go to a breakout room is uh, deleting branches. Because now, uh, I mean, in terms of so, uh, development, software development, what we uh, uh, told you is uh, every time you want to add a new feature in your code, we create a branch and we can work some, in some kind of isolation during the development process. But then we merge, and once this is merged, uh, the branch we have created is not needed anymore. So we can remove it safely. Uh, and what does it mean when we remove? If you do a git graph, here you see I have this experiment and less salt here, and I have all these commit messages, but uh, I will not be using anymore this experiment branch or this less salt because I have merged my feature already in the master. So I can remove these two branches and I can use this minus D lowercase. So when you use a, a git branch minus D, it's for deletion of a branch that has been merged with a, a master. So here I can do git branch minus D experiment and let's salt. And it will delete branch experiment and let's salt. And it, it shows the commit, which is this who commit message, this one and that one. If I do git graph, so here you see I have experiment and less salt. I will keep exactly the same structure, the three structure, the, all the commits, the history of my repository will remain the same, but I will not have any more a reference to this salt, less salt and experiment branch. And this is the only thing we have done when we delete branches. So now I cannot do a git checkout experiment or a git checkout less salt because it is not anymore a branch. I have deleted the branch. Uh, so this is uh, to show you like the workflow. You create a branch, uh, you implement a feature, you merge it, and then you can delete the branch. So now uh, I told you every time we will uh, we do a commit, we do a merge, and you will see we'll make an exercise, and this is not fully uh, what will happen. You will see something a bit different, but this is interesting. But this is all exercises you will do in uh, the breakout room. Yeah. So I think now everybody, everyone is back. So I I hope you had a, a interesting breakout uh, room session where you managed to do at least a fast forward exercise where you could see the message was uh, slightly different from what we had, no comments. Uh, and uh, if you had time maybe to look at or at least discuss some of the optional exercises. So now I will uh, summarize what we have done in this episode, which is mostly to create branches uh, to have a modular uh, approach for software development where we can develop different feature in isolation for a time and merge whenever we need with a main branch, which is a master branch in our case. So we have seen the git branch uh, command where without option, uh, it says where you are. We have seen the git branch with a name to create a branch. Uh, checkout, git checkout and the name of a branch to switch to a branch. The git merge when we want to merge and the deletion of the branch. Um, if you create a branch and uh, you see after some development, it doesn't fit uh, at all uh, uh, and uh, it's completely wrong and you want to delete it before and uh, you don't want to merge it, then you can use this minus D capital letter and it will let you delete a branch which has not been merged. So it's a bit dangerous. It, you, you will lose what you have done because it has not been merged. Uh, that's it. There is a shortcut which is useful, uh, is to create a branch and to check out at the same time, which is to use a git checkout and minus P. 
option. So here we uh, use, uh, we have summarized the typical workflows we use for uh, creating feature and creating branches, but I have already explained quite a lot, so I will not go back to this. You can read them again if you want. Uh, so we create branches to implement new features. Now what we will see is uh, uh, so the next session, which is conflict resolution. So uh, the, the goal of creating branches is to limit or to reduce the amount of conflict. So this is a good strategy uh, is to avoid conflicts. But we, when we have conflicts, we need to uh, make sure they are easy enough to be resolved. And this is uh, uh, the, what we will see later on with the uh, modular code development. But now that we will create a conflict and we will see how to manually uh, uh, handle this conflict. Oops, sorry. Wrongly. So uh, to create a conflict, it's, uh, uh, Git is quite good to merge, as you could see. When we are uh, touching the file at different uh, lines uh, and we don't touch the same um, information, like uh, uh, we added silent row and then uh, we, uh, we do salt in another branch, there were no conflict and it was easy to do the merge. Git does it automatically. But when it doesn't know what uh, output to take for the merge uh, um, file, it will ask you to manually resolve the conflict. So what we will do here is uh, we will have two branches where in one branch we will uh, have reduce the amount of silent row. So depending on what you have, we will uh, reduce it even more. And we will create at the same time another branch where we will have more silent row. So here you see, uh, it technically the merge cannot be done because when we merge, what Git should choose to have more or less silent row. So here, this is where the manual intervention uh, will be needed. Uh, or at least you will have to define which strategy you want to adopt when you merge. And this is what we will see here. So we will uh, have a type along session again, where we will create a conflict. So we will create these two branches, one like cilantro and one dislike cilantro. It here, and I will clean oops, uh, all the notification. So here, this is what I have. Um, so I tried to resolve. I, I hope you have a bit more comments at the top. If I do a git status, there is nothing to commit. It's clean. I'm in the master branch. Uh, obviously, I created a new branch, but I didn't delete it, but it's okay. It was for the fast forward. I can delete it. The So git branch, I have only one branch and it's clean. Git status, clean. And git graph will give me uh, the head at the last commit. So I created this fast forward. I did this fast forward exercise, which was a minimum to be done. But it's okay if you have something slightly different. So now I will create a new a like and dislike branch. So let's do the two branches. So I get, and I will use a shortcut, git checkout, checkout minus B, and uh, I will call it like silent row. So if I do a git branch, you can see, now I created a branch and then I moved to this branch at the same time. Uh, and then I can, hmm. yes? There's a question, the hack MD. Can you comment on why the Git graph looks the way it does after merging the branch from the exercise? I don't know if now's the right time to answer, but just so you know. Uh, which one? You want me to answer now or late? Uh, I, I don't know when's the right time to answer, but. Yeah, maybe. Uh, made it bold. Yeah, it, it can be a bit different depending on uh, how you have named uh, your commits and what you have done, how many commits you have done in, uh, in this uh, new branches you made in the exercise. But uh, the, the thing to, you should have is uh, at least 
the head should be in the master. And now we are creating a light silent row branch. And now I move to the silent row, but both the head is uh, to the like silent row. But now I haven't added uh, any commits yet. And what I will uh, do now, and I will edit uh, with nano the ingredient. And I will add silent row, more silent row. So I don't know how many we can add, but we can add two silent row, tablespoon of silent row, and I will save. So in this branch, in the like silent row, I add more silent row. I will git add ingredient, git commit minus n, add silent row to the CP. If I do a git graph, I see the head has moved. I have the like silent row. The master is still here. And I have one commit to head of the master branch with a like silent row. So if you manage to create a like silent row, put a yes. If you had any problem, put a no. So here I wait a bit to make sure everyone managed to catch up. So now we are not here yet. I have uh, only created one like silent row. And now I will create a new, another branch, this like silent row from the master. Let's make sure everyone managed to create this branch. Don't forget to put a yes once you are done. And here I will check. I'm still in the like silent row branch. And then I will check out to the master. And I will show you the git graph. So before I create another branch, which is a dislike silent row, I move the head to the master. So I will create another branch, which is a dislike silent row, but from the master. So it's important you check out master as here. Git check out master once you are done with a dislike. So we have few people having trouble. I hope um, they can get some help. Yes, so if you made, uh, um, that's what uh, we had in some of the exercises. If you created the like silent row from the branch, uh, if you haven't made any commits, you can still, uh, you can always delete the branch from. You, you see with a, a git branch minus D, you can delete the branch. That's probably the easiest to do so far. There are other ways to do which we discuss uh, below. Uh, now I will, uh, from the master branch, I will create a new branch, minus B, git checkout minus B, and here I will do a dislike silent row. So here, this is still a um, type along session where I, uh, we have created the like silent row branch, and now we are creating a dislike silent row, but from the master. 
um, so if I do a git graph, you can see uh, my head is at the dislike, cilantro, and master. Oh. And there is one commit for the like cilantro, but I'm still here with the head, the current pointer. Uh, now I will edit again the uh, in ingredient with nano ingredient. And because I dislike cilantro, I will remove cilantro, like 0 0.5 teaspoon, half a teaspoon of cilantro. So if you have a different number, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you reduce the amount of cilantro in this branch. And I control X and I save. So now I have less cilantro and I will add and commit. So I'm staging and I commit my changes. Reduce the amount of cilantro. If I do a git graph, you can see I have no one more commit for the dislike cilantro. The head is here. And we have these two branches, the dislike and the like cilantro, and the master is here. So I can do a, use the, uh, a diff to uh, make a diff between two branches. So I can use git diff here. I can see the tree stru structure with git graph, but with git diff, uh, master, like. I can so see the differences between the master branch and the like cilantro. So in the master uh, branch, I have uh, less cilantro. I have one teaspoon of uh, cilantro. And in the like cilantro, I increase in, um, one, one more teaspoon of cilantro. And you can do the same with the dislike, master, dislike. Cilantro, where this is the other way around, we reduce the amount of cilantro, which is what we do here. Um, so now we will start merging, exactly using uh, what we have done before, using a merge. So what, what can happen now if I start merging? So if I start merging, if I do a git graph, if I merge a like cilantro with a master, uh, you see the, uh, the master is here and the like cilantro is here. When I will merge, I will only move forward. This is why I will have the fast forward message when I will merge uh, with the like cilantro because there is nothing to merge in the file itself, in the ingredient. It will only take what we have in the like cilantro. So here, to make sure I want to merge, remember I have to check out to the master because I want to merge the like cilantro to the master branch. So I do a git, check out, master, and I check and in the master branch, and I, now I will merge the master branch with the like cilantro. And you see this fast forward message, which is uh, the one you had uh, so before. I do a git, graph, what happened here is only move the head to master and the master and the like cilantro are at exactly the same commit. <coughs> so there were no effective merge here because we only uh, update uh, the like the cilantro. But now what will happen when we merge with a dislike cilantro? Um, I will do it here, git merge. So git branch, check. Still in the master branch, git merge, dislike, cilantro. Um, and now here, I will. So now please notify uh, by uh, yes, if you manage to get a conflict and then no, if you have any problem. So here it's explicitly said is auto merging ingredients.txt because that's the only file we changed. 
and it says it cannot merge it automatically, automatic merge failed, fix conflict, and then commit the result. So it means here uh, um, it, it is not finalized merge because it, Git it doesn't know what to take. Do you want more or do you want less talent? You have to choose yourself. So if I do a git status, I can see the ingredient. Uh, now it's like an unmerged pass. So um, if I edit the ingredient, so here it clearly says it, uh, merge has not been done. Do it yourself. And what do we see? This is what you will see. The merge has not been done, but you have the different version from the head, which is notified here and from the di dislike sign. So here you really have uh, a concatenation of all the different contributions for the different branches and you have to choose yourself. So you need to edit the file and manually remove what you want to keep or you remove what you don't want to keep and you, for instance here, if I want more silent row, so I want to keep or less silent row, let's take less, I will this. So I will I use control K to cut text in one note. And I choose to have only half a teaspoon, a tablespoon. So here you are you have the choice, you do it, you have edited manually. I save it, but now it's not finished because if you do a git status, you still need to add the file and commit to finalize. So you need to git add ingredient with no change. Git commit, and it will uh, uh, give you this message, mail from dislike and mantle. So it's, it's uh, trying to finish uh, the commit, I control X, and now I do a git status, it's done, the git graph, the head is here. So we managed to, uh, uh, to merge the two branches. What do we have in the ingredient? is only what we fixed manually in the file. So we had to make choice. Not with master. So if you don't merge with master, uh, you will end up with some weird, but it, it, you can still catch up on this. You can merge uh, uh, with a different branch. You don't have to merge into the master when you make some development. But here in this case, this is what we did. So, so you see these markers. Uh, this is what we had when we edited the file. Um, so here we give some more commands to see the div, which is exactly what we had uh, um, when we, we used uh, this nano and we edited the file. So we did this manual resolution. This is only when you know what uh, you want to, to keep in the final, in the merge. So you can use this git merge and uh, this minus X capital letter O's, which means you want to merge, but if there is anything uh, in doubt, take the change from the current branch. So if you are in the master branch, it means you will uh, not take what is here in the less avocado branch, for instance, but you will take what is in the master. So it will uh, uh, reduce the conflict because you know already as a strategy that if there is something that has been changed in both branches, take what is in the default master branch, in the current branch. Or you can take the there strategy and use this minus X with the letter and theirs, where instead you want to take what is in your branch in the less avocado in that case, so using this. And we use this recursive to make sure we do it for all along. Uh, if you have any problem when merging, so you start to merge, you start to resolve conflicts and you have changed a lot of codes. Uh, you remember editing manually a file and then finally you realize you got it completely wrong. Uh, and there is no point to go further because everything you will try, it's, uh, it's broken more or less. You can abort your conflict. So with a git merge hyphen or minus minus abort, and then it will reset uh, and uh, do exactly what it was before the merge. So it, it can happen, uh, especially when you have difficult conflicts to resolve. 
So it's a, it can be useful to know this command. And then last but not least, uh, in terms of software development, the best strategy is to avoid conflicts. So here we gave you some tips uh, on how to, uh, to help to minimize the number of conflicts in your project. So we have different, of, uh, different kind of measure, like human measure that you can take yourself and your team to uh, reduce the number of conflicts. Uh, and uh, collaboration measure, when we collaborate uh, all together, project layout measure uh, and technical measure we have put here. So this is very important uh, because it, it's really the best strategy is to organize your project to have the minimum number of, of, of conflicts. So uh, one thing to remember, and you can read all these different tips we have put uh, here, one thing is push early and often. I think that's the best tip we can give. And we will see when we are using GitHub and collaborative work, where uh, it's not a problem to push and, uh, very often because we can uh, reduce the number of commits at the end. So uh, it's much better. Uh, and uh, in terms of resolution of conflicts, uh, to try not to have a, a branch diverging from the master for a very, very long time, because the, the more uh, you keep it separate, the more difficult the merge uh, will be. And the most likely you will get conflicts. It doesn't prevent you to talk and discuss in your project. And this is very important. And we will see when we collaborate, uh, what we call social coding is a very important aspect of uh, software code development. It's not because we have tools that we don't discuss and organize the project appropriately. The tools cannot resolve all the problems. And that's it. Uh, I don't know if we have any questions. Um, I will, we will explain the push, etc., in the pool in the uh, next session. So now um, the next things we will do is uh, we will prepare for collaboration. So we'll start sharing the repository online. So this is the final step. Well, so far what we did, we have it on our local machine. I have it on my laptop and the, I'm the only one to see what I have done. Now I'm ready to share and I want to share it online. So we will use GitHub. So we have discussed already, there are different ways to share online uh, with remote uh, repository. We have uh, this here. We have GitLab, we have GitLab, we have Bitbucket, there are options like Notebook, et cetera. Uh, we also have, as part of the Code Refinery project, our own uh, platform, Nordic Research Repository platform, where all your code will be hosted in a Nordic country, uh, and it is in Denmark so far. And so if you want to get some more information or use it, uh, you have the link here. We will use GitHub because this is the most popular, um, and this is uh, uh, quite widely used in the uh, open source community. So you will do this as an exercise in a breakout room, but I will uh, explain here what uh, you will do in the breakout room. So the main goal of this episode is to share this receipt repository we have created each of us in a lo or local machine. So we will go on GitHub, and uh, we will create, a, so if you don't have an account, you need to create an account. Uh, it was part of the setup. Um, so it will not be a type alone. Uh, you will do it on your own, at your own pace. So you will have to log in. You will have to click on repository. So maybe show quickly when you log in. I probably already logged in, yeah. You see here, you have this plus. So you may have a different layout, but you can create a new repository from here. It's a bit slow for me. And this is what you have here. So if you follow along, uh, you will be able to create a repository. We create a public repository and do not select initialize this repository with readme because we have already a readme and we have already a repository and the only thing we want is to push the local git repository into github so we want to share what we have um, and here you have the instruction when you create a repository uh, 
GitHub is very nice. It helps you, it guides you into uh, pushing your uh, contribution. So usually when you create a new repository, it says, what do you want to do? Uh, do you want to create a, a new repository from a command line? And it gives you how you can do it. Or do you want to push an existing repository? And it gives you the command line you need to use in the local repository. And this is what we will do here. So what we will do is we will add a remote repository to our local GitHub, Git repository, sorry, and we will push. And this is these two commands, this git remote add, and uh, we call it origin, and we will uh, add it, which is here the address of uh, the remote repository. It will be different for you when you create your repository. And here, when you have this git add github.com, blah, 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 it means this is uh, using the SSH protocol, so it may be different, and you may be using the HTTPS protocol. Um, so, but your helper will guide you when you create and push this. Uh, this is what we specify here. Then you push your guacamole recipe into the GitHub repository. And this is what we specify here, using this git push minus u uh, to make sure we want to track the local branch and the remote branch. So here, what we want to do is we will we have a local repository and uh, we want to create a, a, a remote repository on GitHub and we want to make sure every time I change my local branch, like the master branch, I will be able to push uh, my changes to the remote repository. Um, and then once this is shared, it means you can start the collaboration process, which is you can give the GitHub uh, address of your repository and this person can start to clone and work on your work. And this is, uh, uh, we will see tomorrow a lot more on how we collaborate and the different strategies. So here, this is, this is it for today, for this part. You will share your repository into GitHub in a, in a, in a breakout room. If uh, anyone has no question about uh, this, We'll uh, create breakout room. Oh, just a comment and help. Yes, um, thank uh, you. So you, you mentioned this HTTPS and SSH. Yes. And that's important. And unfortunately, yes. the screenshot shows the SSH version. Yes. But I, I recommend, like, if you don't know what these mean, uh, use the HTTPS. It will be less yes. trouble. That's a very good. Uh, thank you, because I forgot this. Uh, if you don't know what we are talking about here, uh, as uh, Radovan uh, mentioned, use HTTPS. If you know what we are talking about and you have set up your SSH key, you can use the SSH protocol. Can I want to make maybe make some commits? This is the preferred mechanism. I can create a branch called, I can call it all the code from this, this point in past. I can have a look. I can make some changes, test it, test it out. And when I'm, when I'm done, I can go back to master. And if I want, I can delete that, that old branch. And finally, this is a tool that we will not have time to exercise probably, but we have a really fun exercise here, but I want to show you when, when this git bisect tool will be useful for you. And it is useful in a situation where, in this situation, you have a code and suddenly, something doesn't work anymore but it used to work i remember it used to work a year ago and suddenly it doesn't work it broke somewhere on the way i wish i knew which commit was it was and this git bisect tool is really useful then to answer that question and in in the break i made this really clumsy drawing here so these black i don't know blobs these are commits and they happen on a line. And this is the US commit. And this is where we are. And now we realize that something doesn't work anymore. But I remember that long time ago, it used to work. Maybe, and maybe there are 200 commits in between. And I would like to know which commit broke it. Of course, what I could do, I could check out this commit, test it out, check out this commit, test it out, check out this commit, test it out. It would be, maybe it takes a long time. Maybe it's boring. What is a better way? The better way is if I know that this one down here, this is working, then the better way would be to go halfway 
test it out, see it, is it working or not working, and depending on the answer, go again halfway, either up here or down here. And then step by step, you corner the problem and you find the commit that changed it. And I can do that manually, but if you want to have a bit more help, you can use git bisect. So git bisect does exactly this. It will bisect your history until you find the commit that changed it. That can be really useful for debugging. But now I want to give you time to exercise. You will have, you will have 15 minutes. And I want to know, also explain to everybody what, what is the goal. So in this exercise, we will practice these tools one to five. If you have time, you can do it bisect also. But what we will do, we, you will now clone a yet another repository. It's, a, it's an R language repository from Tidyverse. So you step out of, the, of your recipe. You can copy this line to your terminal. It will, it will make a copy of that repository into your computer and you, you step in. And then your goal is somewhere in the repository, there is a line that contains this text. And we can imagine that maybe we got this error on the screen and we want to know where the, does it come from really. So we want to find out where is this in the repository. The next step, find out when was this line last modified. Find the actual commit that modified this thing. Have a look at that commit with git show. Then let's say you want to go back in time to that particular commit. Create a branch pointing to the past when that commit was created. And browse a bit the code and then a bonus uh, discuss or maybe try out how would you go, how would you bring the code back to the one commit precisely before this line got introduced. We can imagine that this would be I don't know, a bug or something, and we want to know, we want to browse the code as it was just right before. So that's the goal, 15 minutes. I'm, I didn't watch the HackMD. I hope if there is something really that we should discuss now, pl uh, please raise it. Otherwise we would come back five minutes before the hour and then we will summarize together. Have fun and uh, write also questions in the HackMD. See you in a bit. Oh, and on an hour, can you please help me to? Yes, I will open the rooms. Spawn the, spawn the rooms. Yes. And maybe for the benefit of those who, who watch the stream, I can try to do that here in the main room.
can you maybe please indicate to me whether this was manageable in the time with uh, either the green yes or the red no? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So for those who, where it was too little time or technical issues, I will stay around after the call if you are curious about any of these commands and also about Git bisect. Here is, here is the history of what I did. So first, first I cloned the code, I went in. I was searching for the file that contained this text with git grep. I found out that it was this file here. And then I annotated it. And that was a, maybe a little bit tricky than when you see the annotation to actually find that line. And I guess maybe there is a way to do that in one command. What I did is I, I opened it in my terminal. I searched for that line in my, in my editor. And it's I found out- log minus s, I think, right? Git log minus s. And then the same string. Mm -hmm. That shows you exactly the commit where this line was introduced. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, it would have been a nicer, maybe nicer, nicer way. And what you then find out is, is this commit over here. And then I can, I wanted to create a branch and I called it old code. And I created the branch pointing at that commit. And then I wanted to have a branch pointing at the commit right before the parent commit. And this is one way of doing it. So this tilde one, alternatively hat one, will take me to, to the parent of that commit. And if you take two, it will be the grandparent. So with this, I can, I can browse, uh, I can go to the time just before that commit. And now we have uh, not too much time left, but I wanted to summarize a bit uh, some take home messages. And just that you know where to find this. Right now, I will go to the end of this lesson and summarize a bit the pra some practical advice. How much Git is really necessary? Try to make it a bit better readable. Because it, it, we added quite some complexity with branches, but how much do we really, really need? So for your simple personal project, when we start, we often start with the master branch and it's okay. And, and later you can, you can start introducing branches. I think that over time you will start to like branches and nowadays for every new idea, I create a new branch, but it is okay for a one person project to start with the master branch. I think what is important is to commit often. Then once the project grows, uh, you maybe want to separate work into branches. You maybe want to write protect the master branch and we will see that tomorrow. So then we can, we can agree on that we, we will never make any changes to the master branch directly. But what we will do instead is we will create feature branches for every change. And then we will send change requests, pull requests, change proposals. And we will tomorrow see how we can do code review that then modify the master branch. Later, when if, if you release code to other people, to the community, you will maybe want to make releases. And I'm not even sure whether we mentioned that today, but these are the tags. So it's like a branch, but it doesn't move. It's a label to, to commit. Uh, I cannot do that with, here because it's not my repository, but maybe just really quickly. I could go to any of my repositories and releases and I can create a new release and I can give it a version. And this is then a more human readable version. I could call it, I don't know, the paper submitted or I could call it 1.0 and describe it. So once you release code to others, this is maybe what you want to do. And then we also got a few questions about Okay, so we stage and we commit in two different steps. Is that really necessary? Can I commit directly? And you can commit directly. You can do git commit file in the file name and it goes it makes directly a commit and it's okay as a start. I think over time you will maybe appreciate the staging area because so I use it a lot because then I can I can uh, inspect 
my changes before committing them. So often I prepare the commit, I use git status, and I make sure that I didn't forget anything. But it's okay to start with this over time. What you maybe also want to try out later is to, to start these, to use these partial, partial staging and partial committing so that I can maybe I'm, I, I work on different things in the same file and I would like to commit them separately so I can stage them separately and commit them separately. We have now 12 o'clock. Um, uh, I didn't watch the, yes? Uh, there's a question that, uh, um, you know, in, in your in exercise, you, show, you showed that uh, you could check out a branch from a, um, this commit hash. Um, uh, someone is asking whether a soft reset would do the same thing. A soft reset will uh, will bring my will bring the head to that commit. So if I do git log, if I do a, a soft reset and I do a git log afterwards, this will be the last commit. However, all the changes that came later are still there and they are all staged. So if I do a git soft reset to here, I keep all the code, but I lose all the commits that happened afterwards. So it will not be the same effect. And uh, can you also mention a little bit about the weight of the branches? Uh, would that take space if I have a lot of branches? You know, if they, they are just labels, right? Yes, a branch is nothing else than a file that contains this hash, which means that it costs nothing, create many branches, it's cheap, it doesn't take up any space. So it doesn't create branches, branches of thousands if you want. Uh, it will. It doesn't mean in Git, when I create a new branch, it does not mean that I copy the whole thing. In, bra in Git, branches are not copies. They are sticky notes. So create branches. Uh, 